Welcome back, everyone. We are covering the Weinstein case, as I mentioned earlier. As you know, we had closings today, and we are so lucky to have Jesse Weber, who is outside of the courtroom. And Jesse, are you there? Fence is closing, delivered by Donna Rotuno. Uh, they interrupted it by a lunch break, and she has gone through one and a half of the accusers. Uh, she started off uh, by there's a by, by really explaining how Harvey Weinstein is entitled to a presumption of innocence, and how that is a heavy, heavy responsibility for this jury that they came in uh, agreeing to look at the evidence objectively, and they're not going to be persuaded by the noise. A big theme that Donna Rotuno keeps pushing is that according to the prosecution, these women, these accusers, according to the prosecution, do not have common sense, that they can't make their own decisions, that they can't make their own choices. And it's from there that she went into each of the accusers. First up was Miriam Halle. Donna Rotuno highlighted the fact that, uh, as you know, Miriam Halle claims that she was sexually assaulted by Harvey Weinstein in 2006 in his Soho apartment. And yet Donna Rotuno says, she agreed to go there that night alone after she claims that Harvey Weinstein awkwardly asked her for a massage after she cried from that event, after he allegedly barged into her apartment unannounced, after she refused to go to Paris, uh, after he requested for her to go to Paris because she didn't want to have a physical relationship with him. And yet after all of these encounters, all of these times, she made the decision to go to that apartment. And what Don Rotuno basically highlighted was that this is a, a fact that might not work so well for her. And it's a fact that she has to relabel when in reality she wanted to be with Harvey Weinstein. She had a relationship with Harvey Weinstein. She benefited from Harvey Weinstein. Uh, it was then that Donna Rotuno moved into Jessica Mann, uh, highlighting again, uh, Jessica Mann claims that she was raped by Harvey Weinstein in a hotel room here in New York City in 2013. And yet, given what she said, she says Jessica Mann uh, manipulated Harvey Weinstein on numerous occasions. She made him believe that she was uh, wanted to be with him, uh, whether it was everything from her communications to her emails. And even if you accept, even if you accept what she said happened in that hotel room, that doesn't fit the definition of rape. He didn't hold her down by force. He didn't threaten her with any weapon. He didn't threaten her in any way. She uh, uh, agreed. She voluntarily uh, agreed to take off her clothes wait there. She could have left at a different point when he went into the bathroom, and yet she laid there. And and that's a big point there. And as she says about the motivation, she's still going through the Jessica Mann uh, account uh, But when we get back from the lunch break, but the big theme here is that these women are ultimately trying now, after 2017, to get uh, financial remuneration, that they want to be compensated in a court of law for what they claim happened to them. And in one really vicious response, Don Rotuno called out Gloria Allred and said that she is looking for a pot of gold at the end of this criminal trial. So we're not even halfway through the defense's uh, closing, and we've already seen uh, a lot so far. Wow, that sounds so exciting, Jesse. One thing I wanted to ask you, you said that Donna was dressed in black when she came into the courtroom. I am wondering, what was her demeanor like? How did the jury respond to her? It sounds like she had very substantive arguments to make, but how was the jury responding to what she was saying? Do you think they are really believing her point of view? Well, it's impossible to know what the jury's thinking. I will tell you from my perspective, they seem highly attentive, looking at every one of the emails uh, that she puts up on the screen. Again, she's using a PowerPoint. They're looking, they're listening very attentively because this is their opportunity to hear the case summarized. You know, a lot of times in this tr uh, trial, I think it got complicated in terms of why does this matter? Where is the defense going? Where's the prosecution going? And she's hitting upon each of those points, including the fact, you remember how I mentioned earlier on that Jessica, the prosecution did not redirect Jessica Mann. We talked about it here on the network. Donna Rotuno brought it up to the jury and said, you know why they didn't redirect her? Because there was nothing more to say. This is a woman that was taken advantage of by the state, and yet she backfired. And, and so she is summarizing everything. I, I will say that Donna Rotuno, when she began her closing argument, uh, she felt like she was reading a lot, in my opinion. She, it almost sounded like a graduation speech. 
as she progressed, as she went into each of the accusers, she didn't look at her notes so much. She became very open, and she's making very persuasive, pointed arguments and taking her time. Remember, the defense pretty much has the whole day to conclude their case, and looks like they are utilizing every moment. So when we get back, she's going to continue speaking about Jessica Mann, but then she's going to go into Annabella Shora and then the three Molino witnesses. So she's taking her time going through all the points. It's interesting. Do you think she'll talk about her defense witnesses? Obviously, the defense doesn't have to put on witnesses, but they did put on several witnesses who, you know, basically controverted what was said by direct. Do you think she'll talk about her own witnesses as well? She already has. My apologies for not mentioning this earlier. She already mentioned the testimony of Talita and Thomas, who were uh, two friends of Jessica Mann, and how their testimony contradicted what Jessica Mann said. Remember, they, they were really important to establish that, first, Talita wasn't forcing Jessica Mann to go to these Harvey Weinstein events or forcing her to have a relationship with Harvey Weinstein or anything like that. And also, after this alleged rape at the Doubletree, uh, you know, Thomas and Talita both said that she didn't appear to be different, that she didn't appear to be acting under, uh, in a different capacity, that her hair didn't seem disheveled, that her complexion was normal, and that her behavior all indicated that it was somebody who... You know, if someone was the big point that Donna Rotuna was making with these witnesses is that if somebody was raped or sexually assaulted, they wouldn't act in this way. So she is taking the defense's witnesses and what they said as true. They were strong witnesses. I don't imagine the defense is going to mention Paul Felcher, given how problematic his testimony was. Uh, as you recall, he was somebody who admitted that on the stand that Harvey Weinstein's a sex addict and that if any of these women were his daughters, he would beat he would beat him up. Not sure they're going to bring him up during the closings, but we'll wait and see what happens as they go into the Annabella Shore testimony. That's a great point, Jesse. I don't think they will either. Listen, thank you so much for being out in the rain and following the Weinstein trial. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back after this.